All right, what's up you guys? So today I'm gonna to be working on the Subaru engine. Uh, this should be the first video in the Subaru engine building series, even though there are some steps that you should take before the step that I'm going to do today. So I'm gonna briefly go over what has already been done and what you should do before you get to the piston balancing, which is what we're doing today. So before you get into any internal work, you need to make sure that you have a good base to do that work from, meaning you need a block that has been machined or a block that is ready to have uh, internals put into it. So this is the uh, EJ255 engine I pulled out of a junkyard. Um, and a few months ago I took it to Outfront Motorsports in LA and had them do a resurface job, um, board it 10 over, and uh, they did a few other things on it as well. So I had this engine bored out to perfectly match these pistons I have here. Uh, forged pistons, you need kind of a special tolerance between the cylinder wall and the piston itself. So they did that for me. Uh, and then every little flat surface has been shaved. The uh, oil pan made up spots been shaved. Uh, flywheel, everything's been when resurfaced and stuff. So another thing that needs to be done before you do the balancing uh, is the ring gap. Now I already did ring gap. Um, I have the rings right here, but I am thinking I'm probably gonna do a different ring gap. So I'm gonna buy a new set of rings and probably try to sell those. But uh, I think I'm gonna run a tighter tolerance than what the uh, JE piston specifies. So. I'm gonna figure that out later, but I'll probably be redoing my ring gap anyways. I'll make a video on that after this. But today we're just gonna get started on balancing the pistons. All right, so the first steps to uh, doing your piston balancing is to have a little scale like this that measures the weight and you want it to be pretty precise within like uh, two decimals of a gram so that you can uh, properly balance your pistons out. Uh, I also have a Excel sheet opened up, which I'll give you a closer look later, but it's pretty much just so that I can list the weights and kind of switch stuff around easily. Now, I've already done this before, but um, I've had having issues with my computer, so I lost uh, video and data for the uh, weights and stuff, so I have to redo everything again, so might as well make the video again as well since I lost the video footage. So, I already know which piston is the heaviest, which piston is the lightest, which pin is the heaviest, which pin is the lightest. But I'm just going to pretend like I don't already know, but as you can see, I already have everything numbered to what cylinder it goes to. Alright, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your first piston, and you're going to want to just clean off any dust and oils off the surface so that it's not giving you an improper weight. Um, and then you're just going to want to take it, turn on your scale, Make sure it's teared and then set it down. So we get 413. Okay. Let's see. I like to take like three or four measurements just to get kind of an average because this scale kind of bounces around a little bit. So we're looking at the 413.15 range. So I'm just going to go on my spreadsheet and I'm going to go 413.15. So now that I got that weight, we're just going to kind of go through the system and we're going to tear it before everyone. That's just good practice. So now you can see I have pistons, pins, top rings, bottom rings, oil rings, clips, and total weight. And now cylinder one through four across the top. And I just laid out um, the weight in grams for each uh, piston. Now I'm going to weigh the pins. Alright, so same procedure with the uh, pistons. Just clean them off a little bit. And then turn your scale on. Tear the weight, and then you're just gonna wanna set it right in the center. 
So, I took the weights down for the pins. Now, you can't safely remove weight from the pins, so you have to remove all the weight from the pistons. By doing so, you just kind of chamfer these bottom edges a little bit, and that's how you remove the weight from the pistons to balance them. But there's no real spot to chamfer these without affecting structural integrity or fitment, so you always have to match the lightest pin with the heaviest piston and the heaviest pin with the lightest piston so um and then you know you work your way through so since i already did this i already had all the cylinders labeled out to where they need to be but you can see the heaviest piston is cylinder number four's piston and the lightest pin is cylinder number four's pin which is 117 grams and then um you can see that the lightest piston is from cylinder number two and that gets or wait no the lightest piston cylinder number three gets the heaviest pin so heaviest pin with the lightest piston uh lightest pin with the heaviest piston and then you have your second lightest and your second or your third lightest or whatever you want to describe it uh matching corresponding with the pins so that's what you want to do and then when you add these numbers up you can figure out how much weight you have to take off to make it equal the lightest so like I said before, typically you'll want to also have your ring gap done so that you can weigh the rings out, but um, if you have a good quality ring, they all should weigh similar and the ring gaps are all going to be the same for each cylinder, so they should all weigh the same and they shouldn't have any noticeable effect on the weight of the pistons depending on how much uh, clearance or tolerance between each piston you want the weight to be. So, as I said before, I'm probably going to change my ring gap, so I'm going to buy a new set of rings. So, I'm not going to weigh those out yet, but the main, uh, the main part where you're going to shave weight off is from the pistons. So, uh, the heaviest parts are the pins and the pistons. The pins are very close in tolerance. Um, you're trying to get everything within half a gram. That's like, uh, after that, it's just a uh, rate of dim diminishing benefits. So... Uh, if you want to get everything within a thousandth of a gram, it, it's not going to really benefit you because um, there's always going to be oil on all these parts. So the oil has weight to itself. It's in different places, so it's going to affect it. But if you have everything balanced within half a gram, that's like the best bang for your buck, I guess. Um, bang for your time. Uh, going any less than half a gram between each part, uh, you're not going to really see any benefits to it. Now the industry standard for having components balanced is I believe 2 grams difference between each component which these JE pistons are in that spec. So um, the variations between each piston is less than 2 grams but when you're building kind of a race motor or something you want to rev to very high RPMs you want to get it to half a gram of balance. You can definitely get closer to than half a gram between all the components but um, the more you go and try to get it close, you'll have diminishing benefits because uh, oil is going to be on these components all the time and oil has its own weight and it's going to be different. So um, for the most part, if you have everything balanced within half a gram of each other, uh, you're going to see the best results as far as you know engine stability at high RPMs uh, and then you know save your time. You don't want to be doing, you know, within a tenth of a gram and you know it's not going to help you that much. So now that I got the weight of the pins and the pistons I can do the majority of the weight removal from the pistons at this point and uh, do a little quick calculation see how much everything weighs and see what the lowest weight is so that I can match up everything else to that weight. Okay so I added uh, the weights of the pistons and the pins together and I got these numbers right here the lightest one being 529.36 grams. I then added half of a gram to that, and I get my tolerance of what si or what weights I need. Uh, so I need to get all the pistons to weigh between 529.36 and 529.86. Okay, so using this tolerance that I need to get the weights to, I uh, kind of just subtracted the weights of the pins uh, and figured out how much uh, I need each piston to weigh since I'm only removing the weight from the piston. So these are on the, the high side. So I can go a little bit lower than these and still have it in tolerance, but uh, I'm just gonna you know, take a little bit off, weigh it, and try to get it to these weights. All right, so what I got here is a Dremel with just a grinding wheel on it. Um, and I'm going to 
remove the weight from the inside of these chamfers. So I'm just going to kind of add like a secondary bevel to these edges and uh, then keep weighing it and make sure I'm not going uh, too far. switch to a sanding disc um, rather than the, uh, the stone. Okay, so now we're going to go in for the final weight, now that it's all cleaned off. No sharp edges. So we're at 412.83, so it still needs a little bit more to go. I'm probably going to try to take off some more because I want to get it closer to the actual number than half a gram. So, just because OCD, but uh, yeah, I'm going to keep grinding away on this for a little bit. and. We'll get a little closer to it. Okay, so with some quick math, you can see that um, piston number or piston number one is now within 0.41 grams of the lightest piston, which is piston number three. So half a gram, this should be good to go. I could take it closer, but like I said, diminishing benefits as as you go so I'm gonna call this good um, I also used a little bit of sandpaper on the edges and I'm gonna get you in for a close shot of this just to make sure it's smooth all right so so here's what the close-up looks like um, you can see that I just chamfered these edges a little bit they're a little bit more of a dull finish than the rest of the stuff um, compared to what a regular one looks like you see it's a machined chamfer so those are now larger chamfers but it didn't affect the structural integrity of the part um, just chamfered it and let's see um, surface finish um, I just uh, did the Dremel I think it's a 220 Dremel and it wears out pretty quick but um, I also took um, 220 grit sandpaper to this and that also worked pretty well uh, just uh, smoothing out any sharp corners or rough edges and stuff but uh, yeah I just avoided I avoided this chamfer because um, this is like a structural part of the piston same with this side but uh, all this like ribbing in here just a slight chamfer and I did most of the chamfering on this side and this side uh, which is the heaviest thickest piece of steel that's not gonna see too much load and it's not going to affect it by just shaving it a little bit. So now I just need to go through and do the same procedure with the rest of the three pistons. Okay, so for cylinder number two, and I also numbered these just so you guys can see. For cylinder number two, um, I don't have to take much off at all. Uh, the weight's pretty close already. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one round of chamfering across every single edge that I did before. Uh, just do like once over and that should get me into the realm of the weights that I need.
so I can leave piston number three alone because this is the lightest one. So that's when we're basing the weights of all these other ones off of. Now, number four, the last one I have to do, is the heaviest one. Now, how on the other ones I was taking off the material from these chamfers, this one, I'm going to try something different. So if you look at this piston, you can see there's a little notch in the side. I'm going to shade the light. There you go. You can see that notch for the wrist pins to slide in. Now this one on this piston is much smaller on both sides. So I think I'm going to enlarge these as a way to get the material about the same size as these. And on all the other pistons it's the same size. There are large dishes in the piston. You can see. Now the only one that is not like that is this number four and they're small so my first step for removing the weight is I'm going to shave some of that off right there and there and then I'll weigh it and see how much I need to take off um, the chamfer method for cylinder number four there's a lot of weight that needs to be removed, so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to chamfer this inside uh, radius of the wrist pin in order to remove a little bit more weight because uh, right now the piston is at 413.5 and it needs to be down to 412 point, let me see, I think it was like 412.8 or something like that, so we got quite a bit of weight to go, so I'm going to start working on this uh, wrist pin just so that there's not so much uh, stress on this uh, piston to reduce weight. Alright, so I got all the pistons balanced out. Um, these two right here are uh, 0.41 grams off of the lightest piston being number three. And this one's 0.48 off. So um, I have room to go with removing material. And right now it's at like a 220 grit finish. And uh, I was looking at Lowe's today. And I found these guys. Which are like a Dremel uh, polishing abrasive. So this is like 320 grit uh, abrasive. So I'm just going to put those on the Dremel and kind of hit up the spots that I... I took off and tried to get a little bit more of a smoother finish and then Alright, those seem to work pretty well. Um, if you take a look at this side, you can see that, let's see what focus is in. So you can see that this, the surface is a lot smoother than than this where you can actually see the the lines in it hopefully you guys can see that the lights kind of intense but yeah it's a lot softer smoother so yeah you guys should definitely do this if you're uh, doing the uh, balancing job that I'm doing so uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of these pistons with the 320 grit Alright guys, so all the pistons are balanced now. Uh, the next video I'll be doing is going to be on ring gap. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you like the video, like the video. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.